Rabbit Test is in four part, part 1, part 2, part 3, and part 4. Now look at part 1. Part 1. You will hear a woman and a man talking about their work at a library. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Hello. I'm Mrs. Phillips, the head librarian. You're the new library assistant, aren't you? Yes, I'm Robert Haskell, but please call me Bob. All right, Bob. Let me take a few minutes to explain how the library works and what your duties will be. First, the library opens at 8.30 in the morning, so naturally we expect you to be here and ready to work by then. Of course. And you can go home at 4.30 when the library closes. Now, let me explain where everything's kept. It looks like here on the ground floor is where the reference books are. Yes, that's right. Up on the second floor is where the adult collection is, both fiction and non-fiction. And the children's books are there too, aren't they? I thought I saw them in the room by the stairway. No, those are magazines and newspapers for adults. Children's books are up one more flight on the third floor. We'll take a look at them later. Let me show you how we organize our work. Do you see that brown book cart over there? The one by the door? Yes, that one. Those books have been checked in and need to go back on the shelves. Okay, so the brown book cart has books to reshelve. What about this black cart by the desk? Those books have torn pages or damaged covers. They're all books that need to be repaired. Okay, I know how to do a lot of that. I'm pretty good at mending torn pages and covers. That's great, because we really need help with that. And that white cart in the corner, what are those books for? Those are old books that we've taken off the shelves to make room for new ones. We sell them as used books to raise money for the library. So they're all ready to sell? Yes, that's right. So now you know what to do with the books in the carts. Let's talk about our activity schedule. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. I understand this library has a number of interesting activities every week. Yes, our activities are quite popular. The most popular one is story time for the children. Do a lot of children show up for that? Yes, a good many. It takes place in the children's room on Thursday mornings at 11. Isn't there a family movie night too? Yes, but it's not at night anymore. We used to have family movies on Fridays when the library is open until 9, but now we have a different activity at that time, so we had to switch family movies to the weekend, Saturday afternoon. How much do you charge for the movies? They're all free. The movie always starts at 2.30 in the reference room, but you don't have to worry about that since you don't work on weekends. And what takes place on Friday evenings? We've just started a weekly lecture series. We have a different speaker every week, and the lectures cover all different kinds of topics. That sounds like something I'd be interested in attending. Good, because we'll need your help with that. You'll be working Friday evenings, and one of your duties will be to set up the meeting room on the first floor for the lecture. What time will you need that done? Let's say by 6.15. The lecture starts at 6.30, and the room needs to be ready well ahead of time. A lot of people arrive early. Maybe I should have the room ready by 6? That wouldn't be a bad idea. 
Okay, why don't I take you upstairs and show you the rest of the collection? That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. Listen to the guided tour commentary and answer questions 11 to 20. You now have some time to read questions 11 to 20 first. Welcome to the library tour. We'll begin our tour of this level of the library here at the entrance. Then we'll go in a clockwise direction. So, first of all, over here on the left, next to the entrance, is a touchscreen information service. These computers can be used at any time to get general information about the library and how it works. In front of the touchscreen information service are the catalogues. As you can see, it's a computerised catalogue system and it's very easy to use. The catalogues are linked up to the other libraries at the university. So make sure you check which library a book is in when you are trying to locate a particular item. Next, along here on the left, we have the circulation desk for borrowing and returning books. The returns area the place for returned books and other items is at the end of the circulation desk, near Closed Reserve. Closed Reserve, as most of you probably know, is a collection of books that are in high demand, so they are on restricted circulation. If a book is on Closed Reserve, you can only borrow it to use within the library for three hours at a time. Over there in the corner are the shelves for newspapers. The library has an extensive collection of local and international English language newspapers. They are kept on those shelves for one month and then stored elsewhere. As we continue on our tour, around to the right, this large central section is the reference section. Reference texts cannot be borrowed for use outside the library. They must be used within the library. All these shelves in the centre of this level are the reference section. Now, the stairs here on the left lead to level 2 only. On level 2 are most of the law books. To go up to the other levels of the library, you have to use a lift. Beside the stairs are the restrooms for this floor. Now, as we walk around this corner to the right, this large room on the left is the audio-visual resource centre. You can come here if you wish to listen to a tape or watch one of the library's videos. Next to the Audio Visual Resource Centre is the photocopying room. There are 15 copiers for student use and we've recently added a colour copier. The system for copying uses cards, not coins. You can buy a photocopy card from the technician in charge of the photocopying room or from the information desk if he isn't here at the time. On our right, these work tables are for student use, especially for small groups to work together. Or you and your colleagues can use the conference room, which is that small room there next to the lockers. You can work on group projects in the conference room without disturbing anyone. And there's a conference room on each level of the library. The round desk in front of the lockers is the information desk. If you need help using the catalogues or you need to organise a loan from another library, the information desk is the place to come. And finally, here, beside the exit doors, these two shelves contain current magazines and journals. 
Like the newspapers, they are kept here for a time and then stored elsewhere. OK, that's the end of the tour of this level of the library. I'll leave you to look around yourselves now and if you need any further help, please ask at the information desk. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation between two flatmates, Craig and Don, who are looking for a third person to share their flat. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Hi Craig, been home long? Yeah, quite a time. Did anyone phone about renting the spare room? Yeah, we've had three phone calls about it. Really? Yeah. Do you want to hear about them? Sure. Right. The first one was called Phil Parrott. Uh-huh. He's a teacher. He's just qualified, and he teaches sports. OK. Actually, I'm not sure about him. He certainly sounded energetic, but he asked lots of questions about whether we smoked and what sort of food we cooked. Yeah. I mean, we don't exactly live on pizza and chips and takeaways. Well, not quite, but... But he might be a bit too health-conscious to really fit in with the sort of life we lead. Yeah. And he asked a lot of questions about the room. He said he needs a big room because he's got lots of sports equipment. Well, th that's OK. The room's quite big, but I'm not so sure about him. What about the second one? He was called David Spencer. Spender? No, Spencer. C-E-R. He works at Cooper Long. You know, the big company on Broad Street. He said he was a lawyer. Oh, I'd have thought in that case he'd be earning enough to rent his own place. I wonder why he wants to share a flat. Well, he didn't say. He's quite a bit older than us. He did say he's just moved down here from the north of England. He seemed very quiet, actually. Maybe he wants to meet some new people. I got the impression he was a hard-working kind of person who doesn't go out all that much. Right. But he sounded OK. Oh, one thing, though... He said he wouldn't be staying in the flat at the weekends, so he wants to pay reduced costs for gas and electricity, because he's only here five days out of seven. Oh, I'm not sure about that. What do you think? Well, I suppose it's fair, but it all sounds a bit complicated. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. Anyway, there was a third person, Leo Norris. Yes. He's an engineer. Oh, yeah. And he's about our age. Right. What did he sound like? Well, actually, he was really funny. 
I couldn't stop laughing when I was talking to him. He said he was very lazy and never got up until noon at weekends, and I said that wouldn't be a problem here. <laughs> no, certainly not. But actually, I suspect he was joking when he said he was lazy. I think he lives life as it comes. He's certainly not competitive or stressed, but he likes cycling and things like that. He sounds like an outdoor type. Anyway, I thought he sounded as if he'd fit in. He wanted to check if there was somewhere safe for his bicycle. That's not a problem. No, he can leave it in the garage with my car. So, did you get his contact details? Yes, he left his mobile number. It's o triple seven six eight seven two four double three. And does he want to move in straight away? Well, he's paid his rent in his present place up to the thirty-first of September. But he said that if possible, he'd like to move in a bit before then. He said the twenty-eighth of September, and he was okay about the rent. Yeah, he said it was fine. Right. So shall we give him a ring and see if he wants to come round? And that is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You will hear an extract from a talk about student health, and specifically about ways to avoid headaches. Listen to what the speaker says, and complete the summary. First, look at questions thirty to forty. As you listen to the talk, answer questions thirty to forty. Complete the summary. Hello, welcome to the student orientation program. Today's session is on health issues, and this talk is about headaches. And how to avoid them? It may surprise you to hear that headaches are often caused by hunger. In fact, one study suggested that seventy percent of headaches are related to hunger, which makes it the principal cause. The advice is simple: eat three meals a day and try to keep to a fairly regular schedule of meals. People associate noise with headaches, and for most of us, excessive noise creates the conditions for a headache. Very loud noise is unpleasant, and people usually remove themselves from it. Having said that, younger people tend to tolerate noise better than their elders, so I may be leaving noisy places far earlier than you. Just remember that exposure to too much noise may predispose you to a headache. Of course, we all associate headaches with studying. In fact, the headache probably doesn't come from the studying so much as from being tense. When we study hard, we often hunch over our work. Try raising your shoulders and tensing them, and now relax. Can you feel how much more comfortable a relaxed stance is? Another thing, it's very important to check that you are working in a good light. It will not actually hurt your eyes to work in a bad light. But it will make you tired very quickly, and is very likely to give you a headache. What's more, if you have the book flat on a desk in front of you, it'll be harder to read, and you'll have to hold your head at an odd angle. It is wise to have a book rest, which raises the material you are reading forty-five degrees to the desk. This will help reduce your chance of a headache. Try to relax before bed. 
so that you will be relaxed when you try to sleep. A soak in a hot bath may be helpful. It's also important to really sleep when you go to bed. A good mattress is a wise investment for people who want to avoid headaches. This talk seems to keep coming back to tension. Tension may cause you to chew too forcefully, clench your jaw or grind your teeth, and this in turn may lead to headaches. It is very easy to say that you shouldn't grind your teeth and very hard to stop, particularly if you grind your teeth in your sleep. Try to avoid situations which will make you tense, particularly just before bed. If you do compulsively grind your teeth in your sleep, ask your dentist about a soft mouth guard. In general, try to eat regular meals and avoid tense situations. Be sure you get plenty of exercise. Hopefully your headaches will be greatly reduced. One other thing I should point out, avoid smoky rooms and cars. Such places certainly encourage headaches and the smoke may be doing you quite serious long-term damage. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of the test. You now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to your IELTS listening answer sheet.